So we're going to start with draining the fluid that's in there, which is pretty nasty. I like to use a suction assisting tool. Open the line and we'll let it start to drain. This only takes a few minutes and it's much easier than cleaning up a big mess after you break the lines open. So I always like to evacuate the fluid first. Next, I'm gonna break the rigid line free from the flex hose on the trailing arm and where it goes into the caliper. These lines are in good shape, so I'm gonna reuse them. A lot of times they're not correct. People have bent them, they're damaged, they're rusty. You can replace them with new ones, but these appear to be fairly new, at least not rusty. Always use a line wrench so you're not rounding off the nuts. Once I get the line off, remove the two caliper mounting bolts, which are behind here. You can't see from that angle, but if you're doing the job, you know where they're at. A lot of times I like to use air tools to take stuff apart, but since we're doing a video, I don't want to make too much noise. Okay, and then remove the caliper. Set that aside. The rotor has already been deriveted. Somebody's done brake job or spindle bearings upon once upon a time, and so we don't have to derivet, which is kind of nice. If you do, I like to drive them out with an air hammer. Some people will drill them out, whatever's good for you. And these areas where the parking brake shoes ride, these have been replaced. They're stainless steel. We don't have to service those at this time, but we are putting new rotors and calipers on. So the rear's done. I'm going to move to the front and we're also going to do the master cylinder. Okay, now we're onto the front. I want to evacuate the fluid from this, just like we did the rear. Open it up. Doesn't take long with suction. But yep, yeah, that's pretty much it. Close the bleeder off. I'm also changing the hose in the front as well. So I'm gonna knock that loose while the caliper's still bolted on. Remove the line from the frame. Disconnect the rubber hose from the frame. Same style clip that was on the rear. That we can reuse. Unbolt the caliper. Nice. 
and voila now that the hose is loose we can spin it off just because we're not using it but once again the rotor has been de-riveted so it should come right off unless the studs are bent there we go yucky nasty these are what they call the cooling fins you see how rusty they are how thin they are and I'll show you the new ones rotor might be thick enough fit under spec that way but if the fins look like this and they're that rusty chances are it's gonna get hot it's gonna warp on you and it's not safe okay so prepping the new caliper installing the pads and cleaning the brake rotor do this four times they're all pretty much the same the only difference with the rotors is the rear has additional holes for adjusting the parking brake shoes make sure you get those on and the offset is just a little bit different I've seen guys put them on incorrectly and wonder why the brakes are dragging well it's because the rotor offsets different and it's applying pressure so remove the cotter pin remove holding pin I like to use a little bit of dielectric grease brake grease whatever you want I put it on the inside face of the pistons that make contact with the brake pad not a lot because you don't want it slinging off just a little bit and I also put it on the leading and after edge of the brake pad I like to install the pins from the outside in I've just done it that way for 30 years and I don't know I guess my thought is if it happened to come out the wheels gonna stop it from falling out where if it's on the inside it's just gonna fall out call me weird it's just just the way I've always done it Get the pin through. There. Now the caliper is ready to go on. I always clean the surface that the pads will be on with brake clean. You don't have to do the hat or the inside part. I've already done this one. It's nice and clean so we're going to walk it over and put it on the car. These are the new hoses. And we've done all four of them. Paragon part number 6024 for the front and 6025 for the rear. Made in the USA by Americans. Woohoo! I'm going to leave that one on. All right, now before we reassemble this with the new rotor, we've got to make sure that the parking brake shoes are adjusted properly. A lot of times the new rotor. Is going to be smaller in diameter than the old worn out one some people machine this area let's just see if this is going to fit nope so the star wheel adjuster down here we just back that off centered try it again still tight a little more And I secure the rotor with all five lug nuts because I'm going to check for run out, meaning make sure it has 
very little lateral run out because if it has too much the brake pads are going to oscillate in the caliper and that can sometimes cause air to enter the system and give you a soft pedal. So to measure that, use dial indicator, magnetic base, mounted on the trailing arm, make sure it's not loose. Set up the tool so you can watch the dial and check your run out. I go around once or twice just to make sure. I don't know if you can see that or not. We'll do a close up here in a second. This one's good, believe it or not. I had like two thousandths. That's spectacular. You don't want any more than seven because it will make that not so kosher. Okay, now we're going to put our new caliper or remanufactured caliper and new brake pad set on. I like to hold it apart with my hand. There's a tool you can buy to keep these separated. I just do it like this. There. Reinstall the bolts. I usually like to put a drop of oil on the threads. Make sure the lock washer's in good shape. Put them in and then torque them down to 50 foot-pounds. Get them both torqued to 50 foot-pounds. Another thing I like to do is make sure that you have adequate clearance for the caliper and the pistons and the brake pads. Sometimes they're too tight. If that's the case, then the caliper mount is probably bent and then you have to replace that. This is, this is good. Okay, now we need to replace the rubber flex hose. It goes from the trailing arm to the frame. It's really hard to see. You gotta remove the clip We can reuse that, it's in good shape. And then the 5 8 line wrench. Bust it loose from the frame. This is another reason I evacuated the system with fluid because this is a mess if you don't drain the master cylinder and all the lines plus we want fresh fluid in it when we're putting it together and you don't have to wait until a hose dry rots or gets a bubble in it i say 10 to 12 years is a max on these so and most of them are dated if you look on the new ones Made in the U.S. by Americans. I get you see. The date on this was 12 6 of 20. It's two years old. It's been on the shelf. That's fine. Easy to install. Screw it back in, tighten it down, and refit the clip. I'm going to tighten it down with the line wrench. Retaining clip. Tap that out with a hammer.
Now we can refit our rear rigid line. I start putting on the caliper first. Start at a few threads. Make sure it's not cross threaded. And then attach it to the new line that we just put on the trailing arm. It's fine. Snuggy, snuggy. Again, line wrench. I tighten it, loosen it a little bit, and then tighten it again. All right, so now this is done until we bleed the fluid out of all four corners. You're gonna install the new rotor on the hub. And I did check the bearings. They're decent. The grease still looks fairly new. This car's just sat for over 10 years and that adversely affected the brake system. Normal DOT3 brake fluid is hydroscopic, meaning that it attracts water, moisture. And that's where the rust comes from. And we got four, almost five thousandths on the front, which is still under spec. I like it to be less than 10, actually less than seven. So check and run out on the front. I'm sorry you can't see it, but this is the way it's mounted. It's the same as we did in the rear. Find a good perch to put it. Verify that it doesn't have excessive run out. Now we're ready to put the caliper on. I've already loaded the pads. On there same thing with the front bolts make sure your lock washers are in good shape drop of oil on the threads and refit them Just run these in. Also torque those to 50 foot pounds. Straighten this. And then attach the hose into the frame. Make sure it's not twisted has a nice flow to it. Refit the clip and the rigid line on the frame. Just tap it in. Another line wrench, three eighths for the line. Snug it down, and voila.